Hello. Hello, welcome to, uh, and, and this is weird to me, a uh, Let's Play series, I guess, of Caves of Cud. Um, I've been talking online about doing a uh, Let's Play of some roguelikes um, for various reasons. Uh, and I was thinking long and hard about oh, which one I'd, which roguelike I'd like to start with. I think Caves of Cud is a good one to start with. I'll talk about why as soon as we get into it. Uh, if you're joining me from Webtoons uh, or Topastic, welcome. Thank you for joining me. If if you don't watch the whole thing, if you wanna if you wanna support the channel, just hit hit that. Oh God, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, we're not doing that. All right, let's. Let's uh, get into it, um, and I'll I'll talk a little bit. Uh, continue. Um, so this is Caves of Cud. I mentioned in a recent Q and A online that this was one of my favorite games, possibly my favorite game of all time. Um, it's not necessarily the best roguelike to start with, but. Uh, what is happening? Hello? New character. Okay, there we go. Um, but I think it's a good one to, uh, maybe start a series with. And, uh, I'll talk about why. We're gonna start, we're gonna make a character. Um, I guess a brief introduction. If you've never seen a, a traditional rogue alike. Uh, Rogue was a game made a long time ago. I don't know the history. I should have prepared. I didn't. Um, with some interesting information about Rogue. Maybe I'll come with uh, start a future episode with some information about Rogue. But in any case, um, uh, Rogue-like has been is a term thrown around a lot these days. Uh, but it often refers to a game which is like Rogue. Um, generally, for the purist, and I'm not really a purist, uh, that means that it's turn-based, uh, randomly generated dungeons, uh, you know, progression-based loot and uh, leveling up RPG-ish. Uh, it generally means that it's a brutal game and you will die and there's permadeath. So anyway, um, this is Caves of Cud. It's, I think, one of the best roguelikes ever made, but we'll, we'll get into it. So I'm going to make a true kin for our first character. Uh, I'll talk about my goals for this channel and for this uh, quote-unquote Let's Play series. Um, I'm going to just kind of bring... Let's distribute randomly for a second here. Uh, let's do it again. No, reset. No, no, let's just do this properly. Uh, I'm going to bring all the stats to zero. We're going to make a very basic human. And then we're going to make them strong gonna give them plus one on those plus one on intelligence uh, it's good uh, I don't generally know how these other stats work so I'm just gonna give him make him plus one and then uh, I'll go ahead and give him oh I, it's gonna be one okay well we'll give him a plus one to strength it'll be good um, so if, uh, if you've ever played a uh, tabletop game D and D ish. Uh, this this is not dissimilar. It it plays a lot like that. Um, so th this is this is the process of in a lot of ways making a D and D character um, or tabletop character in general. So it's usually pretty lengthy. I'm gonna I'm gonna be skipping along because I don't necessarily want all of the first episode to be taken up with character creation. However, I mean, uh, you know. Uh, what makes your character your own, uh, the character creation is ironically, I think, um, one of the least important aspects to that. You, you are going to make your character via the stories that you write, uh, you know, your adventures and also how you progress your character, however you would like to do that. So let's, let's look at these for a second. Horticulturist and intelligence. I'm going to, I'm going to min-max a little bit. We'll talk about... Um, what these mean, but really for for right now, it just means a uh, package of stats and benefits. 
So this one looks good, Praetorian. The ice, ice sheathed arcology of Ibu. You get a long blade. I'm not a huge fan of the long blades. I kind of like a cudgel. But that's okay. We can always get a cudgel. Oh, here we go. Child of the Hearth. Slam. Cudgel. Heavy weapon. This looks like what we want. Child of the Hearth. Let me just double check these other ones. This one's pretty nice. Axe. Axes are nice. Toughness. I like an axe. I'm gonna go with Child of the Hearth. Okay, and you get to pick a cybernetics. And I, heh, this is gonna seem weird for anyone who has not seen Cud. Um, I generally like to go with night vision. I'm pretty sure um, this doesn't necessarily give you night vision. This means you have the license to use it? I'm not sure. Uh, I can go with a random name. Sotori? Sotri? Putra? Uh, pretty new. I like that. Pretty new. Okay. Um, I'm gonna save this character. Give this build a name. Let's call... Let's, let's give it basic... Um, Kajal. I, did I spell that correctly? Uh, embarrassing if I didn't, that's fine. Enter. Uh, and we're gonna... We're gonna start in Joppa. What is your name? What? No, 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 no. Did I... Did I just enter the world without a name? That's fine. Okay, sorry. This I know this is a lot. Um, I thought my name... Oh, well. You know, many things do not start flawlessly. Uh, if you want proof, just look at snail comics, I guess. Um, so I'll read this and then I'll start talking while I do some basic stuff. On the 25th of Tebet Hooks, you arrive at the oasis hamlet of Joppa, along the far rim of Mograyi, the salt, the great salt of desert. All around you, moisture farmers tend to groves of Iridian water vine. There are huts wrought from rock salt and brine stalk. On the horizon, cuds, jungles, strangle chrome steeples and rusted archways to the earth. Further and beyond, the fabled spindle rises above the fray and pierces the cloud ribboned sky so um the first two things i want to talk about a little bit just mention why i love cud um it uh, a scratch is quite a lot of itches for me and uh but also it's just very beautifully written and it has some of the best music in a game that just kind of throws me right into this world so, uh, this is us. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, I've, I've uh, heard from people in the past that CUD uh, is not easy to read for people. It's, it's kind of difficult to decipher what is happening. So I'm going to, uh, let's, let's maybe not focus on the visual so much as what I'm saying and what I'm uh, iterating to you, but... Um, the, the, the hard and fast rule is watch, watch the little man, watch him and his, and, and what he does, I guess. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on him so it's, it's easier. So we're going to talk to this person here. I'm going to try and talk to this person here. I'm going to try and talk to this person here. Okay, here we go. Um, to the north and west through the great salt desert, the sixth day still splits the earth in two. Seek there the grandeur of Shek, Shek uh, Hina, first among fathers. Release yourself from the burden that Chrome bears on your sickly flesh. Go now. Um, I'm going to be a little bit unceremonious uh, about 
the starting of CUD. I've I've started many many games in CUD um, because I'm not good at this game. Let's let's just go ahead and and I'm gonna just throw that out there. I am not very good at CUD. I wish to be better, and I want to talk about the goal, the goals for this for this series. Um, I have a. I have a. I have probably have a weapon. Uh, I would like a better weapon, maybe. I wonder if a bronze mace would be better than what I have. Let's have a look. Sorry for the background noise. This this happens. I have a steel mace. That is much better. Never mind. I have some pretty good equipment, actually. Um, what I should do, though, is uh, buy some bandages. Always want to buy some bandages. Maybe... Yeah, buy, buy, buy some bandages. So we're going to buy a couple of those. Uh, yes, that's fine. And uh, also, if um, Tam here, the Dromad, has anything that is marked... Nope, he doesn't. Sometimes he does. Um, okay, so let's talk about... Let me talk about the... Um, oops the goals for this channel. I'm going to show you the map. I'm going to try and show you the map. This is the map. This is Cud. This is all of Cud. I'm I'm down here. I'm, I'm this little guy down here and this is Joppa that I'm on. Um, there's many places to go and explore in Cud. It's a big place. This right here is the Spire. I've never been to the Spire. Uh, I have not made it very far in this game. I've made it to some of the other places I won't spoil um, but um, you know the one of the things I, I appreciate is that they they let you know right away there's a chrome spire that basically kisses the stars it's so tall and it's just grown right out of the ground and it's it's big and imposing you can see it no matter where you are in this world and it's it's big and intimidating so uh, I would like to go to the Spire, eventually. Um, maybe not with this character? Who knows? With a character, eventually, I would like to make it there and survive. Um, that is the goal for this channel. Uh, so let's see, maybe I'll improve over time. This will not be a short Let's Play, is all I'll say. So let's see what happens. Uh, yep. So we bought some bandages. Uh, we've accepted a quest to go to uh, the do the six day stilt. A go to or he he wants us to go here. Oh whoops! Did I just tell my guy to go there? This is a very bad start for this let's play. <laughs> That's okay. You'll have to for you'll you'll forgive me. It's fine. Um, we accidentally traveled. I don't know where I am. Where am I? Oh, I, I just went diagonally once. That's fine. I didn't even accept most of the quests. I mean, sure, let's check out these ruins. Maybe we'll die. Who knows? There's a crocodile. We should not be here. Let's not do this. Let's go back to Joppa. I'm sorry. But, you know, uh, something nice about that is we now know about some cool ruins. Totally by accident. Um, did we talk to this guy? I'm in search of work. Ah, some critters are eating your water our, our water vine. Farouk claims he saw one sinking around a slinking around a vine patch. Ugly little thing, he says. Pale white, eight legs, an ear splitting wine. I noticed a bit of red dirt in the water vine pool. The same we find in the soil at a nearby cave to the north we call Red Rock. Travel to Red Rock and kill as many of these critters as you can. Bring back the corpse of one to Elder Irudad. We'll reward your efforts. So this is our first goal. Um, might even be the, you know, the end of episode one is me getting to Red Rock. Let's talk to this dude. Oops. Mumbling, tensile strength of Riblon, 
but lacking in dyno elasticity. Retro threading the M band would probably. Oh, I didn't notice you there. That's because I was ignoring you, mumbling, noting a trace yield of synthetic linseed solvent. Yes. Unexpected deviation from the clang constant. Clears the throat loudly. Must you disturb me? What are you? Some sort of treasure hunter? At the very least, make yourself useful and bring me a knickknack from one of the caves. I may reward you. Where can I find such a cave? There are caves everywhere, you dolt. This is Cud. Try the Rust Wells, just east of here. So I, I may go to the Rust uh, Wells first, because I think they're a little bit less uh, murdery. We can talk to this guy up here. And uh, sorry, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So let's uh, let's you know. Get into it a little bit. So this is Cud. Um, let me try and parse out for you what things are. Um, in fact, I can look at things. Uh, there's a there's a better way of doing this, but whatever. So uh, you know these are water vines. These are the things that um, farmers in Joppa are tending to. They're you know a source of food and water. Uh, we'll get into water. Water is a whole thing in Cud. Um, these are dragonflies. They're giant dra dragonflies. Big diaphanous wings bat the air as it drones in place. They are equipped with bite and wings. That they're yeah, scary. And this is a wet glowfish. This is something I'll be fighting a lot in the early phases. And as soon as I'm done talking, I'm I'm gonna do a little bit of editing down, so that you know you the viewer not, don't necessarily see a lot of the grinding i'm doing off off uh screen because uh, you know that's not interesting to watch unless i have something interesting to say i i think so we'll 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 see maybe maybe you want to see that maybe i'll do two video uploads of uh my process one with all of the extra grinding if that's something that interests you but we'll yeah um so while I while I kill this glowfish over here, uh, I'll talk a little bit about Cud. Um, just want to get him in a good position. There we, whoops. There we go. Um, so Cud is a post 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 apocalyptic world. Um, it is a world. Where, uh, you know, let's say the nuclear fallout already happened um, X, 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 X number of years ago, a millennia number of years ago. Um, and there's, you know, the world was seeped in radiation, possibly. Um, there's, there's many, you know, signs of that. There's radiation. There's a... And, and, and so... There are mutants. Um, I've made a non-mutated creature. This is a crocodile. This this guy could destroy us. His hoary, cracked scales look like marked stone. Uh, well, what did it say? Average. Okay, we could potentially kill this thing. This would be good. We killed it. Yeah, this is one of the reasons I made a non-mutant character. Um, mutants are basically the wizards of cud uh you know, i mean they don't have to be i guess but if you want to be a wizard in cud you got to be a mutant mutations take the form of spells in cud basically um when you you know if you have a mutation you can do some really fun things you can like shoot lightning out of your fingertips you can set things on fire with your mind you can even break the fabric of time and space there are very few limitations in cud what you want to do is you know you you are almost free to do it so we, we just found iron D damu oh we do not want to be here right now let me just go ahead and parse this out for you a little bit this is a scary place uh fork horned new they're neutral so that's good because they're apparently very tough Sorry, I, I, I don't have a lot of zoom-in options here. I'm here. That's all you need to know. Uh, stout 
thickly muscled herbivore is intensely territorial, violently attacking anything that crosses her path. Hmm, maybe we don't want to actually get in, uh, be in the proximity of this creature. But, um, the reason we don't want to be here is there's a, basically a lot of nasties. Let's have a look at the nasties. Um, this is a Snapjaw Scavenger. Snapjaws are a common threat in the early phases of Cud. Think of them, I mean, they're basically kobolds, if you know what that is, but they're, they're basically the goblins of this world. Um, you know, uh, squishy, e potentially easy to kill, but they are many, uh, and they, they swarm. They have swarming abilities. Uh, tussocks of fur, dress skin, stretched over taut muscle, upright she stands, but she looks ready to drop onto fours. Her snout star snarls, and her ears twitch. She barks, and her hyena tribesmen answer. That, I'm not so, not, not so scared of, uh, Snapjaw Scavengers. I am potentially afraid of Snapjaw Brute. Um, this, this creature in combination with the other Snapjaws could make a make things difficult for us oh there's also a nice little cat over here chitinous puma oh it's hostile and very tough we should leave i'm leaving now also i forgot to do something in joppa so i'm gonna go do, do that so um back to what is cud um so there are mutants abound uh, some of them hostile, some of them nice, L you know, less of the latter, I guess, N not so many nice ones. You discover Platinum Damu. What? I'm discovering all kinds of places. This is kind of rare for me. Uh, we have more snap jaws. We have many snap jaws and a turret. Yeah, we don't want to be here either. Where am I? There are hostiles nearby. There sure are. There's a Snapjaw right to my uh, southwest here. I'm going to kill him. He's dead. We've almost leveled up. This is good. I opted for making a true kin. So true kins are basically humans. Why in the world is everything, everywhere we go, just like murderous in intent? It, it, this is brutal. Okay, Star Apple. Chromling. Chromlings are fine, I think. This is a legendary Chromling, thatched together out of scrap metal. They teeter. What was the artist and maker thinking while banging metal into a likeness? They occupy a point between poles on several axes. Sat halfway between chimp and human, halfway between child and adult, they are small. And they are shadows. And there are shadows under their chrome cheek. Um, I'll talk about legends in a second. I guess I'm doing a lot of talking. Cut is a is a dense thing. Um, there's a lot of things here that want to kill us, and some of them have bows, and that's uh, you know that's bad news bears. I think so we're we're leaving that area as well. Man, how did I end up here? I guess I traveled east, so. These, uh, these sections of the map, every single little tile here is actually made up of three by three sections. Uh, they have a name. I'm forgetting that name right now. I think it's called, like, Quadrilang... Quad... Quadrilangs? Let me look at my journal. It'll tell me. Parsangs. Parasang, I guess. Sorry. I should... I don't know my, my cud. So we're going to go back to Joppa. Um, I, good to note that east of Joppa, everything wants you dead. Um, so Trukins are basically the closest thing to human um, in this game. And because they are, they have no signs of mutation in them, they are allowed to have cybernetics. Mutants are not allowed to have cybernetics. They, they get the gift of magic um, and mutations and all kinds of crazy stuff, but they don't get to, you know, uh, wear cool robot arms and stuff. 
So here's our first shrine. There's always one shrine in Joppa. Um, shrine to Reshef, the last of Sultan, the last Sultan. The shrine depicts a significant event from the life of the ancient Sultan Reshef. In 3 AR, Reshef cleansed the marshlands of the plagues of the gyre and taught Abram to sow water vine along its fertile tracks. We learned about Reshef. Um, so, you know, hidden amongst Cud, there are uh, statues and relics and artifacts that depict moments of history. Here's another one. There's always two in Joppa, I've, I forgot. Uh, Shrine to Ohim the Second, Icicle Shouter? Icicle Shouter. The shrine depicts a significant event from the life of the ancient Sultan Ohim the Second. While traveling through Igawan, Roost, Ohim the Second, stopped at a tavern in Shirshapur Den. There she lost her prize, Wintry Star, the woe of mysterious strangers. In a game of dice, she cursed the tavern and left Sh Shishapur Den. Um, so this tells us a story. Um, it tells us a piece of a story, a part of a life. A small... You know, it gives us a small glimpse of uh, a sultan's life. We will learn how they were born and the events that that entail. We will learn how they died and how that is also significant and generally we will learn of how they came into possession of an interesting artifact of significance and generally we will also learn how they lost it uh, an amoeba this soon is actually very dangerous to us let's let's see what we can do we killed it very good that's, that is that is fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna do some one other thing. Um, so here are our current abilities. We can apparently rebuke Crowbot. Fantastic. Um, so is it, here's our slam. I'm going to set it to Shift Z. Um, we have Sprint. Make camp. That should be Shift C. To C. And apparently, selecting night vision as cybernetics, we do just get it. So I was wrong about that. Um, and that's great. Uh, you know, darkness in a cud can get you killed. So being able to see in the dark is, is great. One of the uh, gifts of being a mutant is generally you can see at night. At least my mutants can, because I always pick night vision as a mutation. Oof. There's... Wow, this is a crazy seed I've picked. I've never... Cut is rarely this immediately hostile. There's generally just a lot of glowfish surrounding your area. But it's fine. We killed a glowfish. We, we leveled up. We gained some hit points. We gained some skill points. Um, so let's level up quick fast while these other aggressives make their way towards me. Um, uh, we can't take bludgeon. That would have been nice. Um, can we take a skill point, maybe? Nope. We can't. I think, uh, we got a skill point in everything, though. So. I'll try and zoom in here a little bit, just a little bit. I know it's 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 difficult for me to do that because um, then I can't see everything, but I know it'll make it easier for you guys to see. I'm killing some glowfish. I see there's a crocodile here making its way to me. Probably going to try and kill me. And there's a brute. We killed the croc. That's good. This is 
looking dangerous. I'm gonna try and oh this <laughs> that that snapjaw had a relic or an artifact. Let me try and pick it up before um, before this guy gets here. Weird artifact. I'll just get it. It might be something useful. Uh, of course, I don't know what it is yet. So um, I might want to flee. I don't know. Let's let's see. I mean, this guy's probably average, average hostile. That's fine. Okay, we killed. We did. We achieved. Um, let's go ahead and pick up some stuff. Bronze sword. I mean, sure. I'm gonna be picking up... Yeah, sure, clean it. No, don't clean it. <laughs> Just get it. Drink, pour. Um... I know this is this has been a very ramshackled beginning, and I maybe have done a very poor job of explaining this game. Um, I guess the I don't want to put uh, people off who are new to roguelikes or potentially new to CUD by getting into the nitty gritty of what makes CUD uh, interesting, at least to me. Uh, instead, I want to focus on telling an interesting story, uh, maybe you know, enacting an interesting story. So we're gonna rest can I not rest you see a snapshot oh I see we can't rest because there are dangers nearby okay then let's uh, let's just go ahead and manually rest that's good recover our lost hit, hit points in that skirmish there's a interesting splorch over here. What is this? S sap stained snapjaw corpse. Very good. Um, probably get come to our first edit pretty soon. But I'm just uh, yeah. So I, I'd rather focus on you know our character, what we're doing. To be fair, I mean our character doesn't really know much about Cud. It knows what it knows it knows what how it was raised and knows the dangers for sure but you know uh we wouldn't necessarily know everything so let's maybe approach cud blindly oh time to run okay this is our first sprint we're gonna sprint luckily they don't have ranged weapons so that's fine. Oh, okay. One, the weaker one decided to follow me, so I will murder that. We'll go ahead and check. Is there anything useful here? Just a corpse. And then I will rest. And then we go back in. Kill the smaller ones. That looks like it could be useful. Let's try and kill this thing. I should... Let's do a slam. We're gonna do a slam. We slammed it. We slammed it real good. Oh, it's stunned. Nice. Ah, this thing is very... It, it's, it's killing us pretty good. How... It is... It is wounded. Oh, it's now chasing us. And our sprint is... Not on off cooldown. Yeah. This is uh this could be our first death here. Oh no, maybe not. We have our sprint back. Is it still following us? No. Okay, good. Should I try once more? Probably not. Most people who... Oh, well, we're trying again anyway. Slam. Let's, let's, our slam worked pretty well. Nope, not this time. I missed. Q. 
keeps getting criticals on me, which is really, really bad. <sighs> By the way, uh, the reason everything goes green like this is because I have the night vision on. I can turn off um, color effects like that if if it works for people. Like, I know some people cannot uh, parse things out very well if I leave that on, so I can do that. Um, but I, I figured just for the first episode, I'll leave it on. Um, we'll see what happens. We have some new buttons up here. I'm, I mean, I'm playing the beta of CUD, by the way. Um, so there's some new fun UI buttons we can... So there's our, our, our villain there. First episode villain. We pass some scum grass. Oh, oh boy. We hold all we can see. Oh, there's a chest up there. Let's go ahead and check out that chest. Some wooden arrows. Just get them. Um, and some copper nuggets. Wow. This is... This is a lot. This is a lot. Okay, so first of all, we've got a crocodile. We've got three snap jaws, a snap jaw brute. No, we got way more snap jaws than that, actually. We've got tons of snap jaws. There's lots of things to pick up, though. So we'll, we're going to do a, a roguelike-ish thing here. And we're going to try and lure them over one at a time. Hmm, this might be a bad idea. We want to we want to kill them basically one at a time as opposed to all of them at once. Especially the ones with ranged weapons. I'm just going to take light things. So I can sell them later. Can also approach this uh, parasang from a different angle. It's lots of things to kill here. We leveled up. We gained an attribute point. This is very good. Nice. Okay, so we can spend our ability point. Uh, we might want to take, like, toughness. Let's go ahead and take t toughness for some survivability. And we, I think we can take a skill. So let's take bludgeon. I'm going to go for um, as much survivability in this early cud play as possible. a lot of stuff here. Let's have a look at some of this stuff. It's a dagger. And a short bow. That's a that's a good good get actually. Let's let's equip that. They're, they're shooting at me. I shot right back at them. Critical hit. I think I killed it. Uh-oh. 
Did I do what I just think I did? I think I did. Haha. <laughs> so, uh, dragonflies are a pretty passive creature in Cud, unless you hurt them, and then then you are doomed. Uh, I just angered... I, I just accidentally missed a snapjaw and hit a dragonfly. I did kill it. The reason you don't want to really, uh, at least in my opinion, anger the dragonflies is because they can fly and they can just make your life a living hell. They're also not, they don't particularly give you a lot of XP for killing them. I can't, like, I can't reach this dragonfly. Kill that glowfish golem. <laughs> While I'm fleeing for my life. Also, I'm getting hungry in-game. Maybe, maybe, uh, when I make camp, that'll be the end of our first episode. I don't know, I don't, I definitely didn't pick this name, but apparently that's our name. <laughs> Sethras Vor... Vorth, ah, uh, you know what? He's, oh no, not this guy again. Hey, you know, we're stronger now. Maybe we can take him on. We killed him. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, got some slimy furs. Slimy two-handed sword. Yeah, we got some stuff. Good stuff. Okay, let's go back to Joppa. We'll heal. Uh, we'll sell some stuff, and then we'll make camp, and eat, and that'll that'll mark the end of our uh, first cud episode. So let's trade. Maybe I won't edit this first episode. I was planning on doing some editing. I was planning to do a lot more grinding, but there was a lot more interesting things going on than I honestly anticipated. So, you know, that's that's kind of fun. Um, sell this and this and this and this. Maybe we'll keep the iron battle axe. Nah, we're we're a we're a cudgel guy, so we're gonna. We're gonna cudgel it up. We're gonna keep the copper nuggets. Copper nuggets are good. So let me now. Now it's that it's rele relevant. I'll uh, talk about the currency in Cud. The currency in Cud is water, um, clean, drinkable water. You still need it to survive, but you also use it to barter with. Which is one of I, I really like this aspect of Cud because it's. First of all, it makes sense. The cud is a kind of a wasteland, um, so clean drinking water would be kind of worth its weight in gold. And speaking of its weight in gold, um, it being water means that you have to kind of manage it more carefully than just a, you know, unit number currency. Um, you have to make sure you have vessels to carry your water, and you have to make sure that you can carry it, because you know, if you, for instance, are, if you if you become a very wealthy person, then you can't carry all that water. It's it's heavy. Um, what am I buying here? If it becomes tainted, then it's no longer good for you. There's a lot of interesting um, obstacles to making water the currency. Let's go ahead and buy all of. Uh, I think it's just no, never mind. I just want all of the arrows. I forget that what button it is to just ask for all of it. And maybe we'll buy some. No, we won't. No worm skull. Oh, it's so, so expensive. No worm skulls are actually kind of a good thing. Okay. They do have enough. 
Good. We have money. Smolded mushroom. When did we get that? Okay, so I will arbitrarily break here. I'm going to make a camp. I'll talk a little bit about camping. You already have a camp nearby. Oh, that's right, I'm in Joppa. So undoubtedly I can sit at one of the camps that are already made. Which is like rest. Oh, I think it's, uh, is it not in here? Yeah, okay. I can use their furnace. Fire breathes its warmth into your bones. We'll whip up a meal. Okay. Can eat fresh apple mats. 14% to natural healing rate. You thirst at half rate. That's, that's some good, that's a good, uh, bonus right there so uh, very briefly I'll talk about camping um, you got to eat and, and cud obviously um, b make like cooking cooking baking uh, butchering it's kind of like the potion brewing of cud um, when you make a food when you make a recipe or or something interesting uh, it, it'll give you decent buffs and effects um, it, it'll heal you potentially or it will um, you know, give you uh, little benefits. You can move faster. You can hit harder. Um, and you can take skills to become a chef in Cud. So um, camping is, is not really... Nothing is t taken for granted in Cud. And, and camping is one of those things. It's you, you gotta... You take it seriously like almost anything else. Like a simple snap job. So I think that'll mark the end of our... Our first episode we made a character we went and killed some things and we're level three honestly this is a success in my opinion not dying on the first episode is is something I'm I'm happy with so I uh, hope you enjoyed it this and if you did genuinely if I'm gonna try and make anything of this YouTube channel or you know a let's play series if you want to hit the oh god i can't do it never mind don't worry about it i'll talk to you later see ya see you next next episode goodbye